Hi everybody, this is Lisa and it's time for another Verbling class. I see people are already in the Verbling chat and I've been chatting with them a little bit. So if you want to join in the class, the green join class button should be available and I see that they, we have some people coming in. Hello everybody. Welcome. Hi there. Um, so. If, yeah, if you want to join the class, just click on that Join Class button. It's right above the Verbling chat. Um, today, this class is going to be a listening class, so I will be reading some things out loud and then uh, asking you some questions to see what you understood about the reading. I will provide the questions in writing, so that can help you kind of listen for things, and um, I will give you the stories afterwards. So if you want to go back and read them uh, yourself, then you can. So um, I think we might be full. If we're not full, but maybe one more person can join in. I'm not sure. Uh, I didn't count. <laughs> Usually we can only have nine people in the Google Hangout. So um, sometimes the classes fill up pretty quickly. So I see that there are people watching. And I usually like to tell people that you might want to stick around to see if you can join the class because sometimes what happens is people have to leave early um, and so they drop out or sometimes people have a bad connection they might lose their internet connection to Verbling or to Google Hangouts and so sometimes that happens and and then the join class button will be available again and you can click on it and join in the meantime if you want to watch the uh, class live you can do that and you can participate in the Verbling chat. So because this is a listening class, all you need to do is listen and um, try to understand what's going on in the selection that I'm reading. And then I will be asking some questions and you'll be able to answer those as well in the Verbling chat. The people who are in the Google Hangouts will be able to participate in the discussion part and they'll be able to practice speaking and, and asking questions and things like that. So that's the advantage of course, of being in the Google Hangout if you're interested in speaking. So that's one of the best things about Verbling is people have the opportunity to not just listen and read and write but also to speak because uh, for some people in their country it's hard to find people to uh, practice English with. So um, it's getting easier these days though with Skype and all the technology so like Verbling. Okay, so I think we're full, and um, so I'll get started here. I'm going to start by introducing myself. My name is Lisa, and I'm one of the Verbling teachers. We have lots of them now. Um, I think they have Verbling teachers in every time zone, <laughs> pretty much, so that we can offer classes at uh, time zones that work for everybody around the world. So if you have friends and you want to tell them about Verbling, um, I know that we have new people every day showing up to classes and we have a lot of uh, returning students who like to hang out and take two, three, four classes a day, which is a great um, opportunity. Okay, so let's see. I'm just also keeping an eye here uh, on the, <clears throat> excuse me, on the chat. So we have a lot of people coming in and out. I don't know if the uh, internet connections are a little bit weak for some people. Okay, so my name is Lisa. I live in Washington State in the United States of America and that is uh, where I live is the upper north uh, left yeah. over there, the west coast, the Pacific Ocean. Um, it's just under Canada so if you're interested, Washington State, the closest big city to me is Seattle. So some people might uh, have heard of that. Some people confuse, it, confuse uh, this state with Washington, D.C., which is actually the capital of the United States, but that's way over on the other side of the country. Um, that's uh, over there with Virginia and over there. So that's about four or five hours away from where I am by plane. Okay, so that's give you a little information about me. Now I would like to call on each student, and you can introduce yourself by telling us your name and also where do you live? Okay, uh, Marnina, hello. 
Hallo. Hallo. Hi. Um, I can hear you. Marina, is your microphone working? Okay, looks like maybe you got um, locked up. I'm going to come back to you, Marina. Maria Jose, how are you doing? Nice picture. <laughs> Hi, Lisa, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. Okay, I'm doing well too. Today, neighbor, finally, it's cloudy, I can't believe it. It's cold? It's cloudy, it's like uh, the sky is cloudy. Oh, cloudy, uh huh, cloudy. cloudy yeah. Yes. Because here is always hot, but today God God was uh, was good with us. <laughs> okay, so now it's uh, cooler with the clouds. Yes, yes. Hello. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, um, Inga, are you there? Inga, sorry. Yes, I'm here. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Uh, I'm glad to join your class. It's my first time, and uh, I'm originally from Russia, but I live in Armenia. Uh huh. Great, wonderful. So, yes. uh, how did you hear about Verbling? Um, I uh, heard about from Facebook page. Oh, uh huh. Great, wonderful. Well, the welcome. And Thanks. Hector, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you, Lisa. I don't know if you remember me. Yes. I, I changed my logo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Great, well, well, welcome. Thank you. Let me introduce myself. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. My name is Hector Hernandez. I am from Monterrey, Mexico, and I am 27 years old. And I'm really glad to be here in Lisa's class. All right, welcome. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Hernandez. Hazem, how are you? Hi, teacher. I hey. am fine. I'm, good. I'm doing well. Good. Uh, hi everyone. My name is Hazim. I am from Syria, but I am but I am living in Egypt right now. Okay. How are you staying? How's it going over there in Egypt right now? Sorry. How is it going in Egypt right now? It is. Uh, uh, it's a good. Okay. <laughs> I don't. I don't, I don't uh, it's not allowed to talk about Egypt because it's not my uh, country. I see. Okay. Yeah. So you're staying out of the mix. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The uh, Bilal, are you there? Yeah. How are you? I am fine, and you? Good. Why don't you introduce yourself, please? I am from Turkey. Okay, great. Anna, are you there? I'm here. Hi. Um, hi, I'm Anna from Venezuela and that's it. Okay, great, wonderful. And we have another Anna. Gallego, are you there? Anna Gallego, are you there? Is your microphone on? I think I'm a Mickey Mouse as well. <laughs> Mickey Mouse, Minnie. Where's Minnie? Okay. That's Ahmed. Funny. Ahmed, are you there? Okay, I don't hear Ahmed or Anna. And I'm going to go back over here to Marina. Marina, is your uh, microphone working now? Yes, it seems he to rock now. Okay, great. Uh, yes, I can hear you. I'm Marina from France. Wonderful. Welcome. Okay, great. Glad to have you. I'm really glad to, to hear with you. Thank you. <laughs> great. And if you if you notice, Hi. Um, if you notice that your connection gets slow, sometimes people turn off the I, camera I, and just use the microphone. Sometimes I come back again. Okay. Yeah, that's why you, some people have just pictures instead of the camera because the connection might work better that way for some people. Yes. Okay, Ahmed, did did you find your mic? It's on. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Why don't you introduce yourself, please? 
my name is Ahmed. Uh, I'm 24 years old. I'm from uh, Egypt. Okay. And I'm going to try one more time with Anna. Are you there? Did, sometimes um, when you come in, you're uh, automatically muted. So if you look at your um, picture, if you click on your picture, and then you see the microphone, there might be a red microphone. That means you're muted. So if you turn that on or click on that it'll turn your microphone on okay all right so as I mentioned before I'm going to get started with the class so we can use all our time we have only 50 minutes left now it takes a little while to get the class started Moses and in class. To introduce everybody <laughs> so um, this is going to be a listening class so I have chosen a few um, <clears throat> articles that I found on the internet they're not really articles they are just little stories and they have to do with different family situations and they are at an intermediate level of English so there may be some words in there that you are not familiar with but the main thing is I want you to just try to listen and get um, the main points of the story and I will read it through uh, probably twice one time I'll read it slowly and then the next time I'll read it at normal speed and then I will ask you some questions. But in order to help you uh, focus a little bit, I'm actually going to give you the link to the questions. So you can look at those in case you want to start uh, listening specifically for those um, answers to those questions. So I put the link in the verb link chat, and that goes to a Google document where I wrote the questions. And um, that way you can read along and the people who are watching because it looks like we have almost 40 people watching uh, you can also participate in this class because it is a listening class so I am going to be reading um, so you might you'll be watching me and you can put it on your if you want to watch yourself <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna be reading <clears throat> out loud and you can listen okay so this is the story one. Like I said, I'm going to read it uh, slowly the first time, and then I'm going to read it again in a more normal way, and then I will be asking you the questions, and we'll see also if it uh, brings up some other topics of discussion, then I'm happy to also move into uh, speaking. So if some people have questions or they would like to say something, that's okay too. I'm also going to check, <clears throat> okay good, somebody put it in in the Google Hangout chat. If I use the Google Hangout chat, then the people who watch uh, the video now, who are watching it now and later, won't be able to see it. So I'm going to try to stick with the Verbling chat. So if you can ask me questions um, in the Verbling chat, that would be better. Okay? All right. Here's the first story. Uh, let me just make sure. Looks like. Uh, okay. Look. Yeah, we got 22 people w watching the or looking at the questions, so I will read story number one. Veronica was an only child. Even as a child, she decided that she was going to be a doctor. All her dolls became her patients. All her doll houses became hospitals for her patients. She spent her early childhood treating her patients for all kinds of diseases and injuries. She saved all of them and build none of them. Veronica got straight A's in high school and college because she knew that good grades would help her get into a good medical school. She graduated from medical school near the top of her class. She became a pediatrician. She got married and had two kids, one boy and one girl. Veronica's husband, David, was an architect and a great cook. Her children did their homework without being told. They got straight A's in school. They ate all their vegetables without complaining. They were perfect little children, except for one thing. They argued with each other constantly. Veronica got home at 4.30 p.m. today. David gave her a big kiss and a hug. Then her kids gave her a kiss and a hug. She went upstairs and changed into shorts and a t-shirt. When she returned, the kids were waiting for her in the living room to talk about their day in school. Marvin, 10, said that today his biology teacher helped them cut up dead frogs. They smelled bad, 
but he enjoyed seeing their little body parts, like their lungs and heart. I like biology, Marvin said. I want to be a biologist, an animal doctor, and an inventor when I grow up. I'm going to invent a pill so that animals all learn to live together without eating each other all the time. You're crazy, exclaimed Rebecca. What are the animals going to eat if they don't eat each other? You don't know anything. You're a girl and you're only nine, taunted Marvin. Marvin, be polite to your sister, Veronica admonished. Yes, ma'am, he said. I apologize, dear little sister. That didn't sound very sincere, Mommy, Rebecca complained. Okay, here's how I'll keep the animals from eating each other. I already thought of that, of course. The solution is a pill that will make all animals like to eat grass, like the cows and sheep do. That way, no more animals will eat each other and kids won't have to mow the lawn anymore. So that will kill two birds with one stone. Well, that's very clever, Veronica told Marvin. Now tell us about your day, Rebecca, Veronica said. Well, as you know, Mommy, I'm going to be a real doctor like you, not a mad scientist like somebody I know, Rebecca started and then stuck her tongue out at her brother. Okay, so that was the first reading of that. And now I will go back and read it one more time at normal speed. And then you guys can be looking at the questions, and then I will ask you the questions. And people can uh, volunteer to answer them, or maybe I will call on specific people, too. So here we go again. Listen up. Veronica was an only child. Even as a child, she decided that she was going to be a doctor. All her dolls became her patients. All her doll houses became hospitals for her patients. She spent her early childhood treating her patients for all kinds of diseases and injuries. She saved all of them and billed none of them. Veronica got straight A's in high school and college because she knew that good grades would help her get into a good medical school. She graduated from medical school near the top of her class. She became a pediatrician. She got married and had two kids, one boy and one girl. Veronica's husband David was an architect and a great cook. Her children did their homework without being told. They got straight A's in school. They ate all their vegetables without complaining. They were perfect little children, except for one thing. They argued with each other constantly. <clears throat> Veronica got home at 4.30 p.m. today. David gave her a big kiss and a hug. Then her kids gave her a kiss and a hug. She went upstairs and changed into shorts and a t-shirt. When she returned, the kids were waiting for her in the living room to talk about their day in school. Marvin, 10, said that today his biology teacher helped them cut up dead frogs. They smelled bad, but he enjoyed seeing their little body parts, like their lungs and heart. I like biology, Marvin said. I want to be a biologist, an animal doctor, and an inventor when I grow up. I'm going to invent a pill so that animals all learn to live together without eating each other all the time. You're crazy, exclaimed Rebecca. What are the animals going to eat if they don't eat each other? You don't know anything. You're a girl and you're only nine, taunted Marvin. Marvin, be polite to your sister, Veronica admonished. Yes, ma'am, he said. I apologize, dear little sister. That didn't sound very sincere, Mommy, Rebecca complained. Okay, here's how I'll keep the animals from eating each other. I already thought of that, of course. The solution is a pill that will make all animals like to eat grass, like the cows and sheep do. That way, no more animals will eat each other, and kids won't have to mow the lawn anymore. So, that will kill two birds with one stone. Well, that's very clever, Veronica told Marvin. Now tell us about your day, Rebecca, Veronica said. Well, as you know, Mommy, I'm going to be a real doctor like you, not a mad scientist like somebody I know. Rebecca started and then stuck her tongue out at her brother. Okay. So now we're going to go to the questions. First of all, did anybody have any questions about the reading? Anything that you didn't understand? Do you want me to go over before we start? Okay. <coughs> I will go through it a little bit as well just to, uh, so to make sure. I'm going to make this a little bigger here. 
So, how many siblings did Veronica have? <clears throat> he has Anybody no. remember? Okay, he has, has no. Yes. yes. And and how did we know that? What do you remember the little uh, sentence where it, it gave you that his, information? He is uh, one child for his family. Yeah, it actually was the first uh, sentence uh, of the story. Yeah. Veronica was an only child. Yeah, there it I is. Think. Okay. All right. Why did Veronica want to get good grades in high school and college? In order to go to Mecca to become a doctor. Okay, that's right. So she, it says right here, she, uh, Veronica got straight A's in high school and college because she knew that good grades would help her get into a good medical school. So she wanted to become a doctor, so to go to medical school you have to get good grades. Okay. What type of doctor did Veronica become? Pediatrician. Yes. And what is a pediatrician? Doctor who helps children. children. Yes. <laughs> she became a pediatrician. Yes, it is a doctor who uh, works with children. Can you type it, uh, can you type it uh, Lisa? Yeah, I put it right there um, in the Verbling chat. I'm also going to g give you the whole story um, later. I'll give you the link to that so you can read that by yourself if you'd like. And um, what does it mean to get straight A's in school? What does to that mean? Grade. To get good grade. qualifications. Great grades. Okay. Good education. Great. Um, Hazem, do you, do you understand, Hazem, what does it mean to get straight A's? Uh, which one? Number four? Yeah. <laughs> what does it mean to get straight? To, straight uh, A's in school. No, I don't. Okay. Is, I think... Okay, I'm going to read it through and you guys can look at the selection here. Uh, let's see where it yeah. is. Can I answer? Yeah, go ahead. I can't really hear. Can you turn up your microphone a little bit? It's hard to hear you. Uh, straight A, I think it's mean um, great A, great, or mark A. Yes. So I will explain a little bit because it's probably uh, different maybe in your country. Um, in the United States, the way that you get grades in school, like on your tests and things, um, you get A's for like 90 to 100 percent would be an A. So if you got a test and you got a 90 to 100 percent, it would be an A most of the time. And then there's B would be like 80 to 89 percent on the test, and there's C's, and then there's D's, and then there's F, which is failing. You didn't um, get it. So when somebody says um, they are getting straight A's, that means they're doing the best they can and they're getting they're um, getting the highest grades or highest marks in their classes. And that's those are the type of people who later get help like scholarships to go to college or they get into um, special programs for you know really smart. People. <laughs> okay, so here's another question number five. When we were reading, it talked a lot about uh, Veronica's two children, a boy and a girl, and they do a lot of different things. But what is the thing that they always do that's not so good? Argue. So, they, uh, they are argue. Argue. Yeah. They always argue. Right. So in this part, you can see where I read they ate their vegetables without complaining. They were perfect little children. Also, it said they got straight A's in school here. Um, except for one thing, they argued with each other constantly. Argue. So that is something that often happens with uh, siblings. That means brothers and sisters, or brothers and brothers, or um, is that they people are the kids they what sometimes What does it mean, siblings? Argue. Siblings? Yes. Brother and sister. I wrote it in the chat. It means brothers and sisters. So if somebody <laughs> asks you how many siblings do you have, that means how many brothers or sisters do you have. Okay? Okay. okay. That's what siblings is. Yep. All right. What did Marvin do in school? So he's the little boy. What did he do in school? Uh, yeah. he, he, he makes something in a laboratory. 
Yes, frog, frog. Uh, has teacher uh, tried to uh, explain something about the frog? Uh -huh. The parts of the frog, right? Yes. So let me yeah. go back to the reading here, and I will sh uh, point out where it says. Marvin Ten said that today his biology teacher helped them cut up dead frogs. Frog, they yeah. smelled bad, but he enjoyed seeing their little body parts, like their lungs and heart. So typical um, in a biology class here in the United States, usually uh, probably if you're in seventh or eighth grade, maybe ninth, uh, ninth grade in high school, is you uh, dissect a frog, or sometimes it's a little pig. And that's how you learn about uh, the organs of the body, like the liver and the lungs and the heart and things like that. So you dice, it's called dissecting. And that's common to do, uh, you, maybe in high school, I guess, uh, when you're like 14 years old or something. But he did it when he was 10. That's uh, not so common. Maybe with a little frog, but in, when you're in ninth grade, usually around the age of 14, you would dissect maybe a pig or a little tiny pig or something like that. There's mates, they're, they're used especially for that. So I don't know if in other countries that you have that in biology class. Maria, did you, Maria Jose, did you ever dissect an animal in school? <laughs> okay. Not dissect, but we can see or we can manipulate like herds or brains or but but the cows, oh. but a cows brain or cows herd, but never never dissect like a pig or like a frog. I don't oh, know. Yeah. Maybe I can. Oh, okay. I can, yeah. I can support it because I I am afraid of blood or something like that. Yeah. Well, it doesn't have it doesn't have any blood because they um. They keep it in formaldehyde, this chemical, and so it, that's why it smells bad. Um, Marina, did you ever dissect an animal in school? Yes, um, little frog, and um, I don't know, uh, do you say it in, uh, in English, cucaracha? Oh, really? Like a, yeah, like a, 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 a cucaracha cockroach? Yes. Yeah. Cockroach is a little bug. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Inga, how about could, you? Have you, you ever? Could you write it? On the... Cockroach. Yes, please. Could you write it? Oh, okay. Thanks. Uh huh. In, in, Inga, have you ever dissected an animal? No, never. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Some people find it very interesting, and other people hate it. So. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Hector? Did you ever dissect an animal in school? Well, here in Mexico, not so usual to do that. Mm. Maybe, I guess, here in Mexico for biology, mm -hmm. you only read and mm. make some exercise in the book, but not not that kind of classes. Yeah. In, um, in the United States, when you have a class where you do something like an experiment like that, we call that um, hands-on. So it's like a hands-on experiment rather than just reading in a textbook or something. Yeah. Um, um, Hazem. Yes, teacher. Did you ever uh, dissect an animal in school? Uh, yes, I remember one uh, day uh, me and uh, my friend and um, our teacher uh -huh. tried to uh, uh, make experiment experiment. How how I say, experiment, experiment about the did yeah did the fish and uh, know the part the of uh, it yeah which part of it yeah mm, interesting yeah and Anna yeah. how about you did you ever dissect an animal mm, never no not I remember yeah. I think yeah, most of the time you do practice on the book and you do dissection on vegetable like onion or stuff like that but not leave animal for that and yeah. Okay. And um, Ana Gallego, are you there? Mm, hello. Uh, good evening. Hi there. Uh, good evening. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Fine. And you? Good. Did, <laughs> did you understand the question? Did you ever dissect an animal? 
No, no, very well. No. No, very well. Okay. I, I, okay. um, I've, um, I've here, I've here, uh, hold the class. Um, I like uh, very much, but I don't understand very well uh, the questions. Okay. Well, just um, we're going to keep going through the questions, and when I give you the reading, you'll be able to understand better because you'll see it. Okay. And if you have a question, you can ask me if you don't understand something. Mm. Okay. Okay, uh, I I I don't speak uh, very well. Um, uh, it is uh, the first time that I I um, uh, um, hear uh, this class. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. No, no problem. It's good. It's a listening class, so you can um, just listen. It's good to listen, anyways, and uh, train your ear. That will help you with speaking, too. Ahmed, did you ever yeah. uh, dissect an animal in school? Yeah, uh, I guess a frog, a fish, a uh, rabbit. Yeah. Oh, really? A rabbit? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. And the other uh, Ahmed, <laughs> how about you? Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, no, actually not. I didn't to try to, to dissect an animal, but I hope to try that. Okay. Yeah, um, sometimes you can do it just um, in life. For example, my son, uh, went, went, for a little while we were living in Colorado, and there was a big snake that um, died because it got caught in a fence, and it was a gopher snake. And he, when he was eight, he and his friend, uh, they dissected the snake. Uh, and they took it apart and they looked at everything inside and they thought it was pretty interesting. So <laughs> if you ever find a dead animal, you could do that. Uh, you just have to be careful, wear gloves or something. <laughs> and certain animals are better than others. You can see things. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to finish up here with this uh, story. Let's see. What? Okay, so Marvin, he dissected a frog is what he did. The se uh, number seven is what will the pill that Marvin wanted to create make the animals do? Does anybody remember hearing what he yes. wants the animals to do? What uh, Azim? Not, yes, not to eat uh, them, and he want to let the animal uh, uh, only uh, grace. Uh huh. Right. right. Yes, that that's right. Um, in the selection, uh, he said that he wants the animals to all learn to live together without eating each other all the time. And then later, he was explaining that he would give them a pill to do that. Yes. yes. And so that way, they could eat the grass instead of eating each other. And then he said that that will kill two birds with one stone. That's a phrase in English that we use a lot. And I'm wondering uh, if somebody knows what that means. Yes, uh, it means uh, to solve two problems in one uh, solution. Or to solve one, uh, two problems in uh, one thing. Or one solution. Exactly. So sometimes um, one thing that you do will take care of two problems. So the killing the two birds means taking care of the two problems and the one stone means with one solution, one way of doing that. So a lot of people use that expression if they say they're going to do something and they'll say, and that way I will kill two birds with one stone. So that's very common, you'll uh, hear it. Teacher? Uh-huh. Uh, yes? Can we uh, say to achieve two uh, calls with one thing? Um, to achieve two what? Calls. Two Cots? calls. Yeah, with one uh, thing. To achieve? Um, no. It's more like to solve or two problems. Yeah, solve. Yeah, solve, yeah, solve two yeah. problems with one thing. Yeah. yeah. With one uh, solution. Yeah. Solution. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a sentence. It looks like uh, this sentence. Uh, one pair on the hand to ten on the three. 
I couldn't hear what you were saying. Your microphone cut out a little bit. He you said, wanna... he said uh, yeah. a bird in the hand is a better than a ten on the tree. Yes, yes. That's something different, though. It's similar. Similar. Uh, but, but it's similar. It's similar. Different, it's similar. different, yeah, it's different. Yeah. For a different thing. Uh-huh. So in the story, um, after the little boy told his mom and his sister how he would create the pill that would allow the animals to eat the grass, the mom said, well, that's very clever. What does she mean when she says, that's very clever? Smart. Uh, smart. Very smart. Smart. Yes. Intelligent. Uh-huh. You could say intelligent, right? These are all um, synonyms or words that mean similar things. Smart, ingenious, intelligent, um, good ideas. Like you come up with good ideas. You have good ideas means you're clever. Um, so that was a good idea that she thought that he had. Okay, and the last question here. Uh, what does Rebecca want to be? She, she wants want to be a doctor be like a... her mother. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. And that's where it is right here. She says, well, as you know, Mommy, I'm going to be a real doctor like you. Okay? So basically, the story, that's the story. I'm going to give it to you in a little bit here. And then, um, well, here, I'll put it. I'll put it on your guys' document at the very bottom. I'll put the story. So if, if people want to go back later and read through that story by themselves, um, then they can do that. I'm going to go on to the second story. And here you can see uh, the questions for the second story. That way you can look through them for a little bit. And I will go and read uh, the story. But I'm not going to share it just yet. Because this is listening, so it's really um, helping you to tune in to what you're hearing and see if you can understand. Um, all right, so this is story number two. It's about a different uh, family, and here it is. Roland was a carpenter in Virginia. He and Sheila had three kids, two boys and baby Jessica. The baby had been in and out of the hospital for the last year because of infections and other problems. She was very weak and sick. The doctors were not confident that she would live another year. Taking care of Jessica was expensive. The family was deep in debt. Roland, an independent subcontractor, had medical insurance but he had very high deductibles. Things were bad. Roland saw no light at the end of this tunnel. Then he saw an ad in the newspaper. Security guards slash contract workers wanted $100,000 a year. First $80,000 tax free. $20,000 bonus for extending contract an extra year. He called the number. The line was busy, but he kept calling and finally got through. He was worried that the jobs were all taken, but they told him plenty of jobs were still available. They said they would give him two weeks of training in Texas. Then they would fly him to Iraq for his assignment. Roland told Sheila he had to take this job. He knew it was dangerous. He might get injured or killed, but the money was too good. Plus, the family would have full medical benefits, which would enable the baby to get the care she needed. Roland said if he survived the first year, he would probably sign up for the bonus and a second year. Uh, Sheila was worried. Mute. Okay, hold on. Sheila was worried. She asked, "What if you get killed? What are we going to do without you?" "You can't think like that, honey," he said. "You've got to think positive. Think about how well off we'll be in two or three years after I bring back all that money." This is the best thing I could do 
for this family. Sheila hugged him and sobbed. I don't want you to go. Roland flew to Houston five days later. Okay? All right, I'm going to go back and read it one more time. This time I'm going to um, read it more quickly, but this time as a little bit of a difference to help you guys out here, I'm going to give it to you on the questions page at the bottom where I post, um, pasted in the story one, I'm going to paste in story two. So you can read along with me and see if this helps you understand it a little better while, but I still want you to listen as um, I'm reading it, okay? Story number two. Roland was a carpenter in Virginia. He and Sheila had three kids, two boys, and, a, and baby Jessica. The baby had been in and out of the hospital for the last year because of infections and other problems. She was very weak and sick. The doctors were not confident that she would live another year. Taking care of Jessica was expensive. The family was deep in debt. Roland, an independent subcontractor, had medical insurance, but he had very high deductibles. Things were bad. Roland saw no light at the end of this tunnel. Then he saw an ad in the newspaper. Security guards, contract workers wanted. $100,000 a year. First, $80,000 tax-free. $20,000 bonus for extending contract an extra year. He called the number. The line was busy, but he kept calling and finally got through. He was worried that the jobs were all taken, but they told him plenty of jobs were still available. They said they would give him two weeks of training in Texas. Then they would fly him to, to Iraq for his assignment. Roland told Sheila he had to take this job. He knew it was dangerous. He might get injured or killed, but the money was too good. Plus, the family would have full medical benefits, which would enable the baby to get the care she needed. Roland said if he survived the first year, he would probably sign up for the bonus and a second year. Sheila was worried. She asked, what if you get killed? What are we going to do without you? You can't think like that, honey, he said. You've got to think positive. Think about how well off we'll be in two or three years after I bring back all that money. This is the best thing I could do for this family. Sheila hugged him and sobbed. I don't want you to go. Roland flew to Houston five days later. Okay, so there's the story of Roland and Sheila and their three kids. Now let's go at, back up here to the questions. Oops. Right here, number one. What did Roland do for a job? Uh, 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 he was a carpenter. carpenter. Okay, I think everybody, I heard everybody, and I think that you're right. So. No, he's, he's calling. <laughs> he's calling. It's a carpenter, right. So here it is. Does everybody know what a carpenter does? Yes. Yes. Okay, Move. good. A carpenter it works with wood, that's right. So a carpenter um, might build uh, things that you find in a kitchen, like the kitchen cabinets. He might build furniture, he might work work on building houses, parts of houses, so the carpenter is the person who works with the wood. Okay, good. All right, so number two, what was the baby in, or sorry, why was the baby in and out of the hospital? What was wrong with the baby? Inga, would you like to answer? Uh, yes, uh, because she uh, she had an infection and uh, she was so sick and weak. Yeah, exactly. The baby had been in and out of the hospital for the last year because she of infections and other problems. She was very sick, very weak and sick, and they thought she might not even live. Okay, so that is the correct answer. Um, what does it mean to be in debt? So they said that. The, they were in debt. But what does that mean? Uh, $100. <laughs> okay, let's let Inga. Money. money, yeah, it has to do with money. What's the problem with the money if you're in debt? <laughs> uh, it means you have uh, to pay to other people a lot of money. Right. Uh, someone so, wants money from you. Exactly. So it means that you owe money to other people. 
and you maybe you don't have enough to pay them back. So that means you're in debt. So for example, go ahead, what, Ahmed? Like a liability, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's like a, being a, having a liability. So if you um, are looking through your money, so a lot of times in the United States, what, what can happen for people is if you get sick, and you need to be in the hospital for a long time or you have a lot of um, you have to go see doctors it's very very expensive and most people um, they have uh, some the, type of insurance but it they doesn't are go, what? they are going to banks and take a loan yes right so they have to try to pay back their bills and yes, yes. and so sometimes it's more than they can um, afford so they're in debt and sometimes they can't ever pay it back because it's too much. Did you have a question, Anna? Yeah, no, I, I don't get it. If they pay for the insurance, the insurance doesn't cover what they need for the hospital? Or Okay, I will explain. Sometimes here in the U.S., um, people have a choice of what kind of insurance they pay for. And so sometimes you pay for insurance, but it only pays... Um, for a certain percentage. So, for example, if I uh, say, if I have full coverage, that means that anything that happens, the the insurance will pay. I pay the insurance, you know, every month. Maybe I pay uh, two hundred dollars per month, and then later, if something happens to me, they pay everything. But some people pay a smaller amount every month, and then if something happens, then maybe the insurance will only pay eighty percent. And that means I have to pay the rest. But if it's you know a hundred thousand dollars because I needed a special surgery and then I had to be in the hospital for ten days or something, um, then I will owe say twenty thousand dollars. And maybe if I don't have that money, that means that now I have that as a debt. It's money that I owe. Does that make sense? Yeah. Clear. Yeah. Okay. Well, fair. Yeah. But clear. Okay. All right. And here's another one where um, in the story it's mentioned that he was an independent um, subcontractor. I'm wondering if anybody knows what that might mean. Yes. Uh, he works by, by himself. He doesn't work uh, in, uh, in a private company or in the company that uh, provides him with uh, health insurance. Yes, exactly. And so if you work for yourself, like a lot of carpenters have their own business and they work as what we call subcontractors. So sub means um, below. So they're working below somebody else, but um, it's not in a business. It's not like in a big uh, company or a corporation or something um, that might pay for your insurance. So he has to, he has some medical insurance. But um, they're saying that his deductibles are very high. So your deductible means when you go, maybe you have to pay the first $10,000, and then your insurance will pay after that. But $10,000 <clears> is still a lot of money to pay. So that's why, that's why he's uh, so concerned. Okay, so what? Let's see. Number five. Uh, How much money could Roland make in one if year? Uh, if yeah? we said uh, independent worker, right or uh, not? In independent subcontractor or independent worker, yes. Right. Okay. Yeah, contractor, okay. So how much money did uh, could he make taking this job? Does anybody uh, remember? 100 dollars. Uh, right. Everybody, I'm just kind of letting you all answer so you have time. <laughs> it's okay. I can hear you all. Yes, so here it is. This is what we see. It's security guards and contract workers, so people who will come and do things like he does, like carpentry probably, maybe also other types of contractors might be like electricians, um, welders, people who do uh, manual labor, things like that, or maybe they have specific um, skills. Those would be contractors. And so he's not going to work... Um, necessarily for a corporation or the military but as a contractor so they just pay money and they're paying him a lot of money because the job is very risky so why would he want to take this risky job Hector why do you think he would want to do that 
You won't. You won't. You want some history. more money? Mm -hmm. Yes. And Marina, go ahead. To help. Hold on, hold on, guys. I'm gonna let Marina answer this. This one. Marina. Yes. Uh, Why would he do that? He, he wants to take uh, this risk because to to save uh, uh, girls, uh, little girls, to mm -hmm. pay to pay the, to pay his debt. Yes, exactly. So he wants to take this risky job because he can make a lot of money, which will help with all of his bills and the debt. Yes. Okay, so here's a question for everybody. Marina, would you be willing to take a risky job like that if you needed to uh, make a lot of money? Uh, maybe it's to save uh, the life of, of my little girl, maybe. Okay. Inga, how about you? Uh, yes, sure. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Hector, would you, like, would you take a risky job for, to make a lot of money? No, uh, just to save the uh, some uh, sure of the dead people. Okay, Inga. Yeah, so there's a specific reason. Okay, so Hector, uh, you my, would. Uh, my country is more risky than Iraq. <laughs> 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 Hazem, would you take a risky job in order to make a lot of money? Uh, not uh, just to uh, save for money, but to help. Uh, uh, if uh, this uh, uh, thing uh, uh, helps to save uh, the life of other years, I will do it. Okay. Hamdi, are you there? Omar? Yes, yes. What, how about you? Would you take a risky job to uh, make a lot of money to pay bills and save your daughter? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I, I completely agree with my colleague. Uh, okay. I, I can take a risk for uh, a risky uh, job. To yeah. save my family, to pay bills. Yeah. Hundred percent agree. Yes. Okay. I guess I'm probably assuming that everybody else would too. Anna, would you? <laughs> yes, it's a sacrifice that you do depending on the situation. Or? Sure. Okay. And Ahmed. Yes, of course. Okay. <laughs> the life is like adventure, and you have to take all the opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I'm gonna go to the next question then. Well, so what was his wife worried about? Why was she worried? Uh, she worried uh, uh, to to kill in well, the Iraq. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so far. Yeah. So she was, but not only that. Yes, so she was worried that he worried. might get um, killed. And you, yeah. And then this part here, where she says, "What are we going to do without you?" So without it, you. yeah. Without so she's you. going to be alone. So do, the ch question 10 is, do you think it is a good idea to leave the wife alone with three kids for a year? <laughs> <laughs> no, it is a wrong yeah. decision. It's a difficult decision, huh? Yeah, yeah. of course yeah. not. Uh, 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 can find actually, that helper. it depends on the, uh -huh. on the wife. If, uh, if the wife can depend uh, by herself, uh, yeah. you can leave. <laughs> you can leave. Right. Well, Hector just said uh, maybe she can find help. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. Why, uh, of course. Yeah. Maybe the grandparents or some family or friends or something. But Maria Jose says it's a complicated situation, but he wants the best for his family. Yes, that's right. Okay. Good. All right. I'm gonna go um, see if we have enough time. I'm gonna read one more story, and it sounds like uh, people found it much easier to uh, understand when um, when you had the text. But I'm not trying to make it easier. I'm making it harder. So I'm not going to give you the text yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to do one more story. Um, there it is, but now it's going away. Hold on. So here we go. This is number three, and it's about, uh, I'll give you a little bit of background. It's about a guy named Luke who is going to marry a woman who has a son named Kyle and so it's about these three people okay somebody has a going in the background yeah mute whoever has the thank you okay Luke didn't know what to do 
He wanted to yell at Kyle, his fiancé's son, because Kyle continued to argue with his mom. She didn't even demand very much from him. Study hard. Get the best grades you can, she told him. She tried to get it into his head that she didn't have the money to pay for his college education, not a cent. Instead of studying harder, however, Kyle spent hour after hour playing video games on his computer. He waited until the last minute to study for school tests and then stayed up all night cramming for them. When Jane tried to remind him that he needed good grades so that he could get a grant or a scholarship, he would get angry. He said it was her responsibility to take care of him financially until he graduated from college. Where did he get that idea? Luke asked. You've raised him for 10 years all by yourself. You don't owe him a thing. With his attitude, he should be glad you haven't kicked him out of the apartment already. He graduates from high school next year. When I was in 11th grade, my father made it clear to me that when I graduated from high school, I was expected to leave home. Yet Kyle thinks you have to pay his way through college. Jane wouldn't allow Luke to talk to Kyle. He doesn't like you telling him what to do. He says you're not his father, so why should he have to listen to you? Well, his father's dead. He should appreciate that I'm around to try to help him. Maybe Kyle would learn to accept Luke's help and advice in time, Jane said. Okay, so that was story number three about Luke uh, and Kyle. Lisa, yes. You are so fast in this story. <laughs> I know, because yeah. we're, we're running out of time. <laughs> <laughs> So here's the story. Um, okay, now. Yeah, so now you can see it. And now let's go through the questions just real quickly here. Because, uh, all right, so what was Luke worried about? Let's go back and I'll read it slowly here. Luke didn't know what to do. He wanted to yell at Kyle, his fiance's son, because Kyle continued to argue with his mom. She didn't even demand very much from him. Okay, so why was uh, Luke worried? What was he worried about? Violence. He was worried about. Violence. Violence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was he was worried about Kyle arguing with his mom all the time and playing video games. <laughs> but mostly he was worried about um, the fact that Kyle always argued with his mom. Okay? And let's see. Whoops, let me put it in the screen share I just saw that I don't have it there. Sorry. Okay. Number two. What did Kyle's mom tell him to do and why? So here we go. Yep. Uh, to study hard, get the best grades you can. She, talk, uh, she told him uh, to study hard. <laughs> yes, exactly. You can just say that uh, she told him to study hard. Why did she want him to study hard? In order to, um, to get the scholarship. Yes. Because right here, she tried to get it into his head that she didn't have the money to pay for his college education. She wanted him to be able to get some type of a scholarship, which is like free money to go or a grant. A grant okay. Yes. Yeah. The grant is the same meaning of the scholarship, right? A grant is usually um, money that they get. It's usually um, it's more like a loan, actually. A lot of times they might give you some money, but then sometimes they give you a loan at a very uh, low interest rate. Uh -huh. So that you can get money for school that way, and then pay it back over time. But it depends. Uh, it can. Uh, yes. You you mean the scholarship is better than the the grant? Yes, scholarship is better. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's harder to get uh, scholarships because scholarships is just like uh, free money. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What did Kyle spend hours doing each day, and what did his mom want him to do? Instead, so what was he doing all day long? The playing game. Yes. Playing game. Right here it says, instead of studying harder, however, Kyle spent hour after hour playing video games on his computer. 
It says he waited until the last minute to study for school tests, and then he stayed up all night cramming for them. What does it mean, uh, to cram for a test? Uh, to keep uh, to keep awake, awake. It means to study at the last minute. So you're like cramming everything into your head <laughs> at once. <laughs> That's what it means. You're putting it all in there and trying to remember everything, um, but at the last minute. So that's what it means to cram for the test. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I think uh, I have to end the class. It went by pretty quickly. So here, I just want to make sure you guys know that um, here are the questions. If you want to uh, test yourself, then you can read the, um, the selection again. I put it down here. Um, story number three, it's just that little part right there. And you can go and um, ask yourself the questions, or if you work with somebody, if you want to get a verbling partner and they speak English fluently, you could um, ask them if you answered it correctly and practice um, telling them the story. Those are all good ways to um, improve your English. So um, you guys did a good job, and I just recommend that you keep listening to more and more. English, that's the best way to train your ears so that you can understand when I'm speaking or when somebody else is speaking. Um, sometimes on Verbling, the teachers try to speak more slowly, but then also we want to give you the opportunity to um, try to uh, improve your listening skills with somebody who's speaking a lot faster because when you're watching movies or TV shows or when you talk to somebody they probably are going to speak uh, more quickly. Uh, Lisa, yes. before you leave uh, I yes. just uh, want to, uh, to ask questions. Okay. Uh, the, the English exam called TOEFL or TOEFL? TOEFL. TOEFL. TOEFL or TOEFL? TOEFL. 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 Not TOEFL. TOEFL. It doesn't matter too much. <laughs> if you said it, it no, but, uh, they will understand. But someone Tofu. told me, uh, yeah. someone told me, oh, uh, and uh, he called you. Teufel, no. Teufel. No. Teufel. No. Teufel. No. It's kind okay. of, I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's an abbreviation, so it's not a word. So it just stands for the test of English as a foreign language. So... Somebody might say it TOEFL or TOEFL or some people, there's not necessary. I mean, the word toe is a word, and that's toe. It means your little toe on your feet, <laughs> you know, like your fingers, but on your feet. So, uh, but that's not a word. TOEFL is not a word. It's just the name. So the way you say that abbreviation or the acronym is TOEFL. That's how I would say it. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Lisa. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Okay, see you next time. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye, Marina. Bye bye, Marina. Thank you, Azam. Thank you, Ahmed. Bye bye.